Today, I got a great hand for you guys from Dragon Poker Cyprus. Absolutely one of the best players there with Jason Kuhn and another very, very fun and very good action player, Elton Tsang. Yeah, let's just roll the clip. Elton picks up Ace King. Snap calls. This is deceptive. You can never put Elton on the hand. Mixing up his strategy here. Jason Kuhn gonna try to hit a little set of threes. Archer trying to get in there. All right. People sl splashing around a little bit. Elton didn't get the repop he was hoping for behind him. And we see some wild pre-flop action here already. Not like big bats flying in, but we see Ang Siang starting the action with a race to 3k in our 501k with a 1k anti game. So very big anti comparable to tournament here going on with those deep stack. Yeah, obviously King nine office is very, very, very loose. Building a multi-way pot. We have uh, Elton trapping his ace king, hoping for some action behind. He's mixing there and that should be Absolutely fine. Jason Kuhn having an easy overcall with pocket threes. Artur Martirosian going in with a suited queen there. And Paul Fua from the big blind with a 6-5 offsuit, which should play pretty pretty fine as well, multi-way. I agree with all those plays. Just the king nine off is a very wild loose open race. And then on tables like that, you sometimes want to trap your ace king to, to get some real action in and not only the ISO race and a couple of callers. So I actually like that trap as well. Let's see a flop. Ace on the flop, but Jason Kuhn hits a set of threes. Time for Jason Kuhn to make some money back. Okay. There's five ways. So Jason Kuhn snap calling here, wants to look weak, wants one of these other guys who haven't acted yet, hopefully to continue along as well. He knows he's so far ahead. And this is where it actually gets interesting here. So we see the ace of diamonds, five of spades, three of hearts, a rainbow, ace high board, Elton now making top pair, top kicker which is usually a great hand, but not necessarily five ways, right? Everyone could have a four, a deuce, like some connected stuff there, obviously the sets, the two pairs and so on. So very, very dangerous with a stack to pot ratio where actually stacking off ace king shouldn't be too good too often. Obviously our open raiser absolutely misses that board and there's no reason to represent strength there five way, I would say. You wanna have some equity going on for you. Paul Fua with the six, five, maybe some backdoor opportunities, uh, hitting trips, two pair and so on. The action is, is the following, that Elton decides to stab at it for a half pot. I'm not sure about that sizing. I think anything is fine. You don't wanna size up too much because just like you're playing against four players i see them as like combining as a team defending against your bet and four players together just have a lot of good hands and this is why you shouldn't put out big bets i think half pot is kind of right on the edge and it's absolutely fine getting the calls in from weaker ace x charging four x deuce x four or five like a five six suited maybe stuff like that while not investing too much money in the potential better hands jason kuhn is interesting here that uh he decides to flat. He certainly has the best hand now. Uh, pocket fives would be even better to have like the little cooler on his side if someone else flopped the set. And I would, I would highly recommend fast playing fives here most of the time because five way you are just playing against equity hands usually. You want to race there uh, instead of trapping because who is blasting like five ways on the flop with like some super air. Elton is such an aggressive player that can make a lot of sense. Uh, my standard would be the small race actually. The call has to be absolutely fine. Everyone else gets out of the way um, and even, even Paul is not chasing his mid pair and back door straight draw. Let's see a turn card and some, some follow up action. Pretty safe card for Elton saying from his point of view. Not too worried about the six. They're actually gonna play cautious. Seems suspicious. Twenty-five 
50,000. Large bet. Problem is, Jason Kuhn could do this with worse than Ace King. He can't fold down. Turn is the six of hearts. A little more connectivity, a flush draw on the board now, and Elton decides to check to Jason, who decides to bet, and we see the check call uh, from, from um, Elton. Jason goes for a kind of a linear size to go directional in, not, not, not absolutely linear, but he's, he's um, pretty much uh, preparing a pot size river shove, slightly over pot. He doesn't want to split his range too much. He maybe wants to bet like two pairs, maybe a strong ace still in the same way to, to protect and then check back the river. Just keep his range together there a little. I like his sizing a lot. I think that makes a lot of sense. Elton decided to check in the first place, which is interesting. And I like to see it from that side that what is the goal of like a pot size that Elton tries to achieve here with his ace king? How much money can he get in against ace jack, against ace 10? Usually that is uh, just like one more street, I would say. He's not getting stacks in against an ace eight type of hand here. Yeah, whether he takes that street now or later, doesn't matter. Out of position, you usually want to kill further action a little. So he prefers to have the check check and then go for one street. The king of hearts in his hand shouldn't be a huge factor here. He's probably never stabbing like the king high flush draw to have like some kind of lookalike to his flush draws that he wants to play the same way. He needs obviously a little less protection because uh, Jason cannot have something like king five of hearts or, or yeah, some, like just a hand. It's tough to find a hand containing the king of hearts from that, that multi-way action on the flop. Jason is definitely not, not chasing like a king ten of hearts type of hand there. Lots of players still to act um, on the flop. It's just an ace king tries to get a check check and then probably one big uh, value bet. Facing that bet he I guess has a clear call. You don't want to check fold your ace king here. I'm fine with, with both their plays and uh, let's let's see what's up next. That is a bad run out for both players. Could kill Jason Kuhn's action. Elton going for a little block bed, looks like. Bro, I mean... <laughs> I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I just flop a set. I mean, this is a sick run out. Look at, look at this. I mean, what is this run out, man? Just, I just have a set. I mean, I don't... <laughs> wow, Elton. Set of three? Yeah, man. I got a set of three. I thought he was value betting. Now it's praying for a fold. So sick, what is happening? Um, I mean, are you just live to be? If you bet really big, I would fold quickly, but I'm thinking maybe you can just have a seven or something. I don't know, probably not. It's not that big of a bet. All right, we see a river card and it's, it's a beautiful seven of hearts. You're bringing the one card straight for every four out there and bringing the flush on the board. Three hearts out there, everyone could have a flush. Elton decides to lead out 30K into 72.5K. I'm not really sure what it represents kind of bet size. You can just see Jason Kuhn being lost in the spot. He's calling off a set and doesn't even know which bluff or worse value hand he wants to expect here. Let's have a look at Elton's play. It's, it's really, really interesting. I think he plays lots of hands in that way on flop and turn that beat Jason now. He can have any ace x of hearts and he can have something like ace four, maybe even step four or five at some point and then kind of feeling priced in on the turn. I think that makes a lot of sense here to build a leading range because which flushes does Jason have? Is he betting 5x of hearts on the turn? Maybe trying to move Elton off an ace? Maybe, maybe not. A little on the unlikely side, I would say. And ace x of hearts? Is that betting large on the turn if it, he has like an ace eight of hearts? Or is it more like slow playing, playing like an ace eight type of value hand and waiting for the flush to get there? Or it's, is he really that merge to kind of have that in his range as well? So I think it's actually very tough for Jason to have a flush here. And it's incredibly tough for him to have four, which allows Elton to use big bet sizes as well. So what the case is here for Elton is he has the king of hearts, which, well, we discussed that already. Which king of hearts is Jason having? So it's actually like, it looks like a nice blocker, but it's doesn't matter too much. It's more the spot itself. 
And now the question is, what is Elton wrapping with those 30,000? I think it has to be a four. Like the flush just needs to go all in and you want to have the ace of hearts. If, if Elton has the ace of hearts king, that's a beautiful front door open jam, I guess. He would get Jason Snapfold of that set or of any two pair, uh, which would obviously be a great play then. And this year, I, I don't really know. Like I'm actually feeling watching the hand exactly like Jason probably feels right now with, with everything he says. It's like, what is it? Like he's a little scared that this bet size could be even an ace seven trying to sneak out the last value out of an ace-queen. I'm not even sure whether Elton just puts Jason on ace-queen and tries to sneak out another 30k and this is actually a value bet. I won't offend you because maybe there's a chance you have ace-7 or something, but I think I'm gonna lose this hand. I'm gonna call the river. Yeah. You win, you win. Okay. Great run out. Yeah, I mean, there are better run outs, I think, well, I get. Maybe a king. <laughs> yeah, very bad, okay. <laughs> huh? Very bad, okay. I'm lost. I think we need to ask Elton. We'll probably never find out, but I'll love watching way more of those hands.